Hello, and welcome back to my channel. Now, you may remember not too long ago, I made this video here about the Camaro SS, and I hated it. I told you guys not to buy this car. But then this comment showed up about the Bugatti engine in this thing in A+. So I decided I had to try it out. I hopped on to the single player on my PC and built it. And I have to say, it is way better than what I came up with, and it handles better. Still not great, but better. At least in testing. I haven't raced it yet. So let's take a look at this build, and then I will go race it, and we will find out. Maybe you should buy this car. So, right off the bat, you are going to put in the 8.0 liter W16. That's the Bugatti's engine. So you know it is a $400,000 engine swap. So be prepared for that. With the parts, it automatically comes with everything being elite. The only change you will make to the engine is this right here. It starts with the turbocharger equipped. And you can see if I have that on, I'm an S289. So what I did is I changed it to the centrifugal supercharger which lowers down your level and allows you to put a little bit of handling into this thing. So, I now have the Elite Road Suspension. The brakes are going to stay basic, which sucks, but it is what it is. And then I have the Elite Grip Tires with the Elite Clutch. This uses the uh, Sport 2-Speed Gearbox, because anything else just pops you up into the next class. With the Elite Differential and... And, of course, the auxiliary is a super nitrous grip and super nitrous drift. For the handling, it is set to 35% grip. Steering sensitivity and downforce are all the way to the right. Traction control is off, and drift entry is brake tap. Now, this will give you only 181 miles per hour, so maybe not the best for straight-line sprints uh, in this car. There's not much you can do to get more top speed out of this. You change the gearbox, it moves you up into S, even with uh, all the other parts being basic. So that's the top speed you can get out of this car, but you're going to get to it fast. And the 0 to 60 is 3.9, with the quarter mile of 11.8, almost 1,200 foot-pounds of torque, and 1,525 horsepower. So... Let's go race this thing and see if this build is actually worth buying and recommending in A+. I will also show you an S build I made for this thing as well. Alright, so here we go on the wild thing to see if this is actually worth it or not. And I screwed up the launch. Alright, so here we are on Wild Thing. That launch is not the easiest one to keep in to the uh, section you need to have it in. So, off the line, not the best still, but I've already caught up and I'm going wibbly wobbly. <laughs> I mean, if you're prepared to have this thing drift on you, you're good to go. But. Getting into the lead wasn't too difficult, it's just a matter of maintaining said lead. Uh, because this thing just wants to slide all over the place. But, good news is, you can build up a bunch of burst nos from drifting pretty easily. <laughs> um, yeah, this thing still doesn't handle the best. It handles better than the last build I had, which is nice. Because that didn't handle at all. But, yeah. So far, I'm not too upset about this build. And you do need to be aware because it will want to overdrift on you if you're not careful. And you counter that by just getting out of the accelerator. And it'll just settle down at that point. I just wish I had a spot on this race where I could actually get to the top speed. There's a lot of curves on it and not a lot of straights. But it's, I mean, I'm over 700 yards away from the competition now. And 
I'm not hating this build now. It's still not my favorite because of the handling, but man, I am not hating this thing at all. So going down this last stretch right here, and that's it. We won. I know we didn't get to the top speed on it, but man, that was that was good. A little slidier than I liked, but that was good. All right, so I just want to give you an idea of what this car will do down a straight stretch. So, like, if this was a top speed race, uh, I just want to show you how quick it'll actually get to that top speed. This is uh, something I do with a lot of testing uh, on pretty much any car I build. So, if you look next to this light pole uh, on... Where are we on the map? So, if you come out of Rudiger Safe House and you go to this highway right here which is near that meetup, uh, there is this speed section and this light post right here. I will put the tires in between these two lines of tar down here on the ground and I will just light them up to have a full uh, burst NOS and then I'm just going to use all my NOS into that tunnel and then I see what my top speed is going into the tunnel and my top speed is coming out of the tunnel and I will use no nitrous inside of the tunnel. I do this for every car I build. So going down this stretch, it's not going too bad. We are at 128-ish going into the tunnel, which is actually pretty good for an A-plus car. And coming out, we're already hit the top speed basically. I got up to 190 there for a second. So as you can see, it didn't take long to hit that top speed at all. Most cars coming out of that tunnel aren't going to be going... 180 they'll be at like 160 even in like s class for the most part maybe 170 this thing just cooks up to the top speed um which makes it really good as far as that goes uh but like i said the handling isn't where i would want it to be but it's it's way better than the last build i make so i actually feel like i can recommend this expensive expensive build and I think you will actually win quite a few races uh, in play A plus with this, so long as they're not top speed, because it does want to bog out at 179. But once you get past 179, it'll actually stay by its actual top speed. So I'm gonna go hop into the S version of this car now, and we'll check that out and see how it does. So now for the S build, we are gonna stick with that. 8.0 liter W16 Bugatti engine. Um, and then for the parts, the only thing you're gonna change is this right here from the turbocharger to the screw supercharger. And then I have in the Elite Road Suspension, we're unfortunately sticking with the basic brakes, the Elite Grip Tires, the Elite Clutch. We actually get to put in the three-speed sport gearbox and the Elite Differential, Super Nitrous Grip and Drift, of course. For the handling, this one's at 50% grip with steering sensitivity and downforce all the way up, traction control off, and drift entry is brake tap. For this one, you will get a top speed of 203 miles per hour, a zero to 60 of 4.0, and a quarter mile of 11, with 1,225 foot-pounds of torque and 1,480 horsepower. Yeah, well, I'm curious about something. Oh, okay. So now that we have all that figured out, let's go hop into an S race and see how it performs in that class. Okay, so here we are on our old front rapid transit. Let me get this launch. So really off the line that wasn't horrible. Uh, it would be nice if it was better off the line. But as you can see, I am already passing everybody, and I'm already up at 180 um, and climbing going down this stretch. It is a little squirrely because you're off-roading in a car that doesn't have perfect handling, but uh, we all know that's not the reason anybody's going to build this car and that it's going to be for getting up to the top speed pretty quick, or at least close to the top speed. Yeah, 190 down this stretch is pretty stinking good. 
And let's see, can I get it any higher going on the dirt? Not on the dirt, but I at least didn't drop to the 150 like I typically would. And we're coming around here in the 160s, which a lot of cars I see about 150 coming through that section. <laughs> and we're up at 200 already going down this stretch. So that is really good. But this is the danger zone. So I'm going to break a little bit there and then start going around this corner uh, as carefully as I can without wrecking it. I didn't get any burst knots, unfortunately, but them's the brakes when you're trying to not wreck the car, really. I mean, this car wants to drive you more than you want to drive it, I think. Oh, Lord. Unfortunately, I just clipped that car, which is going to massively affect my final time in this race. I think I probably could have beaten my best time ever if that wouldn't have happened. But we'll say that that cost me four seconds of time. And we'll see what the final time is and would have been if we took, like, say, four seconds off. But again, I'm back up to 200 already. And we're going to go down the final stretch of this. I have noticed that in the single player... That train doesn't seem to come as much as it does in the multiplayer. Multiplayer? Multiplayer. Wow. English is my first language and I cannot speak it. And thankfully I did not clip that guy. So I think one change I would make to this is I would take out the uh, grip probably and put in uh, the near miss and see if that would make... A difference that might be the only change I'd make to this car though and here we are on the final straightaway with just a little bit of NOS and we're hitting 200 and that gets us 252 take three seconds out of that and I've beaten my best time if I wouldn't have had that wreck I would have set my best time ever on rapid transit this thing is a beast it handles horribly, but oh my god, is it a beast. Um, I just want to try one more S race in this, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so here we are doing the endurance race. Um, it'll give us a pretty good idea on if this car is actually viable in something that's not a short track like Rapid Transit is. And... Let's go find out. Uh, let me get this launch. And we're off. So hopefully this is as good as I think it is, other than, again, the handling. And I did not mean to spin that AI out, but I don't feel bad about spinning out the AI. I only feel bad about spinning out actual people, unless they're doing something to deserve it. So, I mean, like I said, the handling is the downfall of this car, but it really isn't horrible um, as the very first build I ever showed off for this car. So, that's nice. I am cooking at 200 miles an hour, just putting distance between me and everybody else. Coming up to the dangerous section of the race... So I'm going to let off the gas a little bit, and I'm going to drift around there. And I got through that section way better than I expected to in this build. Considering I thought for sure I was going to go off just because of the handling. So I guess if you anticipate well enough with this handling, then you're good to go. I am thoroughly impressed with this car now I am glad that that comment was left on whoa as, as I'm like spinning out and can't get control of the car at all but I'm glad that that comment was left on the last video I did of this car because I never would have revisited it without that and I never would have tried the Bugatti's engine here so I'm happy that I did. I can totally recommend this car in both the A plus and S classes for sure.
and not feel bad about doing it. <laughs> this thing is an absolute monster. And it is shocking to me how good it actually can be. Like, for the most part, Criterion dropped the ball on muscle cars. But apparently they have a couple hidden gems of muscle cars here and there. So you just kind of got to keep your eyes open, I guess. Man. Oops, somebody took a cop out. A cop out. <laughs> So I'm, I'm up at my top speed again, which, you know, doesn't surprise me I didn't do too well in that little curve, uh, being at 200 miles an hour, but yeah, this thing is just cooking right along, and I've put a lot of distance between me and the AI, so I can't complain about that. I, I would legit build this in multiplayer. I would build it in A plus for sure and probably also S if I had that kind of money uh, because I try to build separate cars so I don't have to keep moving parts around and then plan ahead before a race happens so that would be you know over a million for two cars in two classes and I get bored of racing the same car over and over again pretty quick so I don't know if I would use them a ton. <laughs> like I bought, I bought the uh, Koenigsegg Regera very early on uh, in this game, and I never really race S plus races because I find them, for the most part, boring. I'd rather do S or A plus is where I think the sweet spot is for the cars. B can be interesting. It's just a little too slow for my liking. Um, and then A, I just haven't found a car I like in A. So it makes it really hard for me to want to uh, race A. But I keep, I keep trying to find some builds for A class that will actually be good. Oops, I missed that checkpoint. Um, wow, I'm over 2,000 yards away from everybody. Um, but all my A builds end up turning into A plus builds when I get frustrated. <laughs> so that's why I have so many A plus and S class videos on this channel. Uh, I really am hoping to change that, but we'll see what happens in the future. So I'm just going to finish this up and I'm curious if I can hit the top speed before the end of this race. I wouldn't be surprised either way. And I'm going to get really close. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, build it, buy it, build it in A+. Do it in S class. If you can learn how to handle the thing, which doesn't take too long to get how to handle this one, you'll, you'll love it. It's a great car. Buy it. That's going to do it for me. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, leave some more comments down below because they really do help me out and they help me help you. And uh, smash the like button, and I will catch you in the next one.